Assalamu alaikum. This is a short podcast in which um, I wanted to reflect with all other brothers and sisters in Islam and also other people who want to reflect on the question of God and whether God exists or not by uh, pondering. And by just, I mean, this is just a podcast which wants to tackle this question, perhaps, I mean, in a simple way, uh, in a digestible way. And to have even more information about this, I suggest uh, looking uh, to channels like London Dawa Movement and speakers such as Hamza Tortis uh, or even Dr. Lane Craig. I mean, these are people that... Uh, most people who tackle these issues and who want to study these things and watch YouTube videos actually look at these things. Now, the way I wanted to tackle this video is actually by uh, looking at one of the arguments, which is the arguments of contingency, and I will explain what this is shortly, and to understand its implications and the way in which I personally try to understand it. So this is like a new way of, well, not new, but I mean, it's my personal way of tackling this and surely other people tackle it in the same way. But, you know, sometimes we all get to the, to the same conclusion. And so the argument from contingency says that, I mean, basically um, is linked to the question of why is there anything rather than nothing? So why do we have stuff? Why do we have a universe rather than have nothing? But a different way actually to tackle the same uh, type of argument is by saying why things are the way they are and not in another way. So for example, if you look uh, at Earth or at the sun at the stars and the moon and so on and so forth, and you see that they have regularities or behaviors or more simply uh, laws of physics, well, you would wonder why are these laws of physics these laws of physics, why would we find these regularities in the universe and not others? So, for example, uh, in, in, in a simple way, we see the sun rising from uh, the eastern, setting in the west. Setting aside the fact that it is an apparent rising and setting, but let's just keep it simple. So, why? This is really important because as far as Islam is concerned, this is one of the things that Ibrahim in the Quran observed. He saw that the, the, we saw the, 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 the moon, the star rising, the planet rising, and then the moon rising, and then the sun rising, and then he came to the conclusion, okay, there must be a God, and this is the ultimate God, and then God helped him by showing him all the creation, and so on and so forth. Now, in the same line of thought, I mean, we don't know whether Ibrahim uh, got to the same conclusion in the same way, but reflecting on that is actually useful. Reflecting, for example, on why does the sun rise from the east and not from the west gives us an understanding, actually, of naturalistic uh, events, phenomena, and explanations. Even if we were to bring the same example to the universe, and we were to look at the universe and how it came to be with the Big Bang, and whether you believe in inflationary models or other models, and so on and so forth, you would still have to ask the question of why this way and not in another way, which is the same as asking why these laws and not another laws? Why are we living in a universe which seems fine-tuned? And I do not want to tackle the issue of fine-tuning because, I mean, the, anthropic, the, the issue of the anthropic principle is valid, I think. I mean, if there are many universes and we are the only ones, we are the ones who we can only observe this universe we have we may we may have the illusion that hey we are the only observers and this universe is fine-tuned for us but if 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 this is if this use if this universe was uh, wasn't uh fine-tuned for us we wouldn't be here to observe it so it's kind of tricky but uh, we can still ask the question of why x and not uh, not why x and not y <laughs> well this is really intriguing. I mean, we know that the Big Bang came to be with initial conditions and we have uh, laws which were working and low gravity and weak force and strong force and uh, etc. But why these laws and not others? If we think about it, we need to come to the conclusion, we have to, to come to the conclusion that something must have determined the universe to have those conditions and to have those laws rather than others. I mean, 
for example, if you have a football team, two football teams playing one against the other, and they're playing the game, well, you would have to wonder about why do they follow these laws and not others? Why do they play this game and not, for example, why does... Why, why, why doesn't why doesn't one of the players take the ball and play basketball and just take the ball with, with with the hands? Well, this is the same case. Why did the things that were there at the beginning, at t zero, at time zero, with time uh, began, so to speak? Even if we can speak about the new multiverse, and we will shortly address it. Well, there were laws that were there, and Stephen Hawking himself, when speaking about this issue which is actually not an issue in the sense of the problem, but question, and actually rather interesting. We see that even Stephen Hawking said something like, uh, as long as there is something as the law of gravity, we will, when we must think and say, and so on and so forth, that our universe um, can and will arise. Well, well, Mr. Hawking should reflect on the fact, and the others who think in these lines, on the fact that laws don't produce anything. If you really think that laws live, on, uh, live, live so to speak, on some sort of uh, uh, realm of ideas, of platonic world, then you would have really to to, to, to address the issue of metaphysical worlds and on, the, on what is in, in that world. I mean, where do the laws of physics come from? Well, uh, it is, continuing with the discussion, it is something really uh, linked to naturalistic explanations. For example, to universes and to stars and to even multiverses, if, if, if there is one, of course, we, we can't observe it right now, we don't have any proof that it exists, but let's say, for the sake of the argument that it exists, we still can ask the question about why the multiverse, for example, follows x set of laws and not others why does the multiverse for example produce multiverses and not ponies and not just ponies because there is something that determines that the multiverse does x and not y that it produces universes for example and not other things and this is really interesting now because i mean even if we were to speak about space and time or if you want to get them together about space-time, well, space-time also works with a set of laws and regularities. So, for example, if you have a black hole, space-time will bend and 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 so on and so forth. So, what does it? What from where does this regularity arise? Why is there not a, 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 an area of space-time that just doesn't bend to the the pressure of gravity, which would otherwise result in a black hole? Well, the question is easy, because there are laws and regularities and so on and so forth, but they are not just brute facts. They are not just things that are. There must be an explanation beyond that. And uh, this is, I mean, uh, if, we, if we look at space-time, we can still ask the very same question of, of why the space, the law, why the laws that govern space and time or if you want to ignore the fact that laws may actually exist per se, why does space and time, why do space and time act in such a way that we find in the universe and not in a completely different way? What can determine the fact that space and time act in a way and not in another? Where, at this point, Lane Craig comes to the rescue. There must be an entity that transcends space and that transcends time, eternal, extremely powerful because whatever starts space and time and then created the big bang and the universe and the multiverse and all whole shebang this means that it's also powerful eternal transcendent uh, because of course it's metaphysical and transcendent because it, it is beyond space and time and of course it should also be an agent and we'll also shortly discuss about why I mean, if someone was, I mean, we are speaking about an entity that can practically do anything, right? I mean, whether you say that these entities, and this entity or entities are physical laws, which, I mean, laws actually do not interact, do not do any, do not um, get into any causal link, just like numbers or geometrical figures, if you want to talk about abstract objects, they do not get into any causal relation with things, and they, and, and, and they surely do not cause 
material things if you want to speak about laws uh, as uh, uh, metaphysical stuff which are not physical in reality so whatever started this could have done anything literally anything but I mean this is the only world with which the only word with which you can explain it it decided to create for example human beings to make human beings to make a universe and to make the whole shebang the whole existence work with a X set of laws and not Y and even if you were to look at the theories about the multiverse I mean the multiverse is not infinite they say that it's infinite but it's a potential infinite meaning that the universe are produced increasingly more and more and more but there are not literally a set of infinite universes and there are some papers that discuss the numbers it's x to the power of x i mean it's a really high number really 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 high number but still not infinity and even if it was why universes and not another thing and i think that this question of why things are the way they are and not in another way is a really powerful argument uh, as long as we are speaking about naturalistic explanations i mean if you want to go speaking about metaphysical explanations or some other stuff like for example uh, the fact that laws may produce things and i mean they do not i mean it's not like mathematics or one plus one produces two just like, uh, I mean, if the mathematics behind $1,000 plus $1,000 do not produce $2,000 in my bank account, right? And that's the same thing. That is the same thing. And I actually am quite, uh, how can I say? I mean, I, I'm quite realist in this, in the sense that, I mean, you say that there may be even laws that produce stuff. Where are, the, where are these laws? And how do these laws produce actually cause of things? It's just nonsense. Continuing the discussion, um, we need to reflect about another issue now. This verse, I mean, the verse of the Quran and Surah At-Tur, which says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Which translated means, were they created from nothing, or were they themselves the creators, or did they create the heavens and the earth? Which is a phraseology which historically has always meant the universe, because there are people around who say, oh, you see the heavens and the earth, they are two separate entities. Well, they are not. In the past, they did not have the word universe, and they said heavens and earth to mean the whole existence. So, the verse ends by saying, rather, they are not certain, they have no certainty. And this is interesting, because if we want to, this is one of the few verses in the Quran, depending on the perspective, that tackles directly atheism. Because here it says, I mean, can something come from nothing? I mean, zero plus zero is equal to zero, and zero plus zero does not produce one, not even the mathematics behind it can produce something, as we already said. And so the verse continues by saying, Are they the creators or are they the creators of themselves? Well, can something create cre can something cre created create itself? Of course not. I mean can 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 for example you give birth to yourself? Can the universe produce itself? No, because it should have been there in order to produce itself. And so in the end, the verse ends by saying, did they created the heavens and the earth? Okay, then what made the heavens and the earth? What made it? And, uh, and, and it ends by saying, of course, they are not certain. And this ending is really interesting. Why they are not certain? Well, if you look at it historically, the atheists were always there, but they were called the doubters. Why? Because they did not really come with proofs. They just came with a claim by saying, well, there's no God. The claim behind atheism is there is no God, but there is there is not really no proof for that. They can just say, well, I don't see God. Well, that is physical experience of something, the only way that we have to prove that something is real. I mean, because it's not. this is not the case. This is not the case. If you take an, ax an axiom, such as reality is real, and you believe in the fact that, you literally believe in the fact that our brains are not in some sort of uh, uh, alien ship being tested for whatever, and in reality, this whole reality for us is just an illusion, for you and for me, it's just an illusion, where when you live to 
you really need to to reflect and to say, okay, how can you disprove something like this? How 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 can you disprove that your brain is not in in that alien spaceship? You can't. You really can't. And so, if if we continue to reflect along these lines, well, what I mean, the, the question is always there. I mean, as I, as I'm doing this video, and this is. Yeah, my first video, of course, you can you can guess it from the way I'm speaking. But if I'm reflecting, I'm literally trying to reflect with you. And I'm trying to, to get the point across that atheism does not have any proof. The almost probandum is on them, because usually believers say that, look, um, here's my book, and here's my prophecies, and here's my signs, and here's uh, the science, and intelligent design, and information DNA, and here's the universe as the beginning, and here's causality, and so on and so forth. And they say, well, there's no God. I still don't see God, so I don't believe in him. But there's no, no claim. There's no, I don't believe in the concept of God, or God is not there because X, Y, Z. There is not such a thing. No atheist does that. And this is why historically atheists were usually called just doubters. They doubt. And we can doubt anything. Even if we were to go to paradise and enter paradise and see God, if, if we, I mean, if we would still have the same type of idea and heart and mentality we have now, we could still say, uh, well, maybe this is just a simulation. I can still doubt that I'm here in paradise. This is, this is, this is the nature of atheism. This is the nature of the doubters. And this is one of the, why historically they were called like this and in this, and the importance also of this verse in the Quran. So... Yeah, this is really getting long. So to wrap it up, the last point. And the last point is to understand a cause or, or, or a, an entity, to understand the entity that are be, behind the effects by analyzing the effects. Now, if we look at the universe or the multiverse, if you believe in one, literally believe in one uh, as, a, as, a, as, as a mechanism, which it is. I mean, if you look at the complexity and you, and you look at how that DNA works and information description and information and information uh, inscription and translation and all these things. I mean, there is literally one dimensional digital information in the, in the DNA, right? Just like a computer. Well, it's a mechanism. At least, even if you don't agree that it's behind this mechanism, there is an intelligence for now. At least it is a mechanism. Now, if I were to tell you, if I were to reduce the whole of existence, the whole of the multiverses or whatever in just a, sp a speck, I would like something small that you can hold in your hand. And this thing, instead of producing universes, let's say that it just produces rocks or objects that you would deem as really simple. Things that do not have a purpose or a function. And this is one of the other things. I mean, scientists say that the universe has have no purpose. Oh, uh, sorry, not scientists, atheists. There are actually many scientists who do believe that there is a God. This whole narrative about saying that all oh, scientists are atheists and they are the bad guys. It's not true. Scientists just study nature and we should really, really, really listen to those who actually try to make a, a sense out of it. Instead of those who say, oh, well, we just observe things we don't care about. Why? Science was born to understand the why of things. So continuing. Let's say that this thing produces rocks and of course because of the effect you you can't look at you can't actually analyze fully this rock producing things but you understand more or less i mean it's simple it's been producing th trillions and trillions and gazillions of rocks but at one point instead of producing rocks of different shapes it produces a cell phone now this one instance would make you change the whole idea that you have about the nature of that thing. Even if apparently the thing is simple, the fact that it can produce cell phones, I mean, it's a whole different thing from producing rocks. I mean, the cell phone is an instrument that has a purpose, an objective of, for example, communicating. And apart from the complexity, whether you believe in this complexity or not, I mean, it has a purpose, it has a function, it's organized in a certain way. And so, the production of this thing makes you change the whole, I mean, leads you to change the whole idea and perspective around this object, right? Now, if you look at the universe, it's the same thing. You have a universe or a multiverse, 
which by chance produced a universe, which by chance produced star, had the initial conditions that could that could lead to the creation of stars and so on and so forth and planets, which by chance one of those planets produced the first replicating cell, which by chance produced life, which by chance this life produced which a process of evolution which was actually non-directed, purely chance. It was purely chance, and by chance, this actually resulted in you and me, and believe it or not, in cell phones. <laughs> this is crazy. This is literally crazy. In order for things to happen in the universe, in the in existence, they can they must have the the. I mean, for things to happen, they uh, how can I say? They have to have the possibility to happen. So for fires to happen, this is a bit simplistic, but this is how it is. For fire to happen, you should have a, a law of fire, right? Which is a simple way of saying you should have a whole set of laws or one law that should predict the fact that if you have X conditions, then the fire would just arise. And the same thing happens with everything. Everything has things that dictate the fact that things happen because of because they can, they can happen the same thing with life i mean if you look at life and consciousness and awareness and wisdom that the human beings have and uh, even the things we produce and the instruments and this is important the function and purposes of our organs and parts of the body, our ears to hear and our eyes to see and our hearts to feel, well, you actually have to tell me what type of cause could produce the things. And this is so amazing that God in the Quran tackle, tackles this. And if, I mean, God says that, I don't remember the verse, uh, I could reference it, it, but he says that in many, many actual occasions, I think he says it, at least one, I'm 100% sure. It says, look at what you believe beside Allah, beside God, all these partners to whom you attribute divine attributes and divine things. Even the multiverse in this case could be one, right? Because they say that the multiverse or the laws of physics, the law of physics have the quality, the qualities of God in the sense, so, or some of them, because they are partners according to what the Quran says. They created the universe and they created X and Y, Z, right? God says, do they hear? Do they speak? Do they understand? Do they even see? Well, they don't. If you interpret this verse to refer to idols, when well, you say they are obvious, it's just rocks. But God is can actually. I mean, this verse can actually mean something deeper. If you look at the multiverse, how can or, or whatever was, whatever is beyond that, how what can this thing be for it in order to produce? beings which are sentient which have wisdom awareness consciousness intelligence and emotions and feelings and this and that and the capacity to see hear and feel and and and, and reflect and ponder and all of this must have i mean must have come from an entity or from something or from a set of laws that have none of these characteristics and these characteristics are all arose just randomly from nothing so this thing does not hear, does not hear, does not hear, does not speak. Of course, does not reflect, does not ponder, does not see, does not have any, does not have any. It's not, it's not an agent. It's not an agent. It's not a person, right? And so, well, it just produced them randomly because, well, for no reason. Because as we said, atheism is just a claim. So if you take these two main points that I, that I tried to. To expose in this first video, which is actually really, I mean, I know perhaps it's a bad video in a way, but when it's the first time, and inshallah, I will improve, God willing, I will improve. So, on one hand, contingency, on one hand, the fact that things are the way they are, and as long as atheism, uh, as atheists or others who don't believe in a God want to stick to the fact that naturalistic explanations are all that they are, are, are all there is then you have to ask them well why x and not y why do you have these laws these naturalistic conditions these regularities these patterns and not others the answer because there's also there, there's always something beyond that they must have determined it why well, the Quran answers because things don't create themselves and if things naturalistic things have a regularity something must have 
brought that regularity into being. On the other hand, um, on the other hand, you have the understanding of what this thing is also through the the effect that it has, and the absurdity of saying that a universe that can produce awareness and consciousness and wisdom and intelligence derives from something that has none of these things, not at all, pure chance guided by laws that were causally mixed and jumbled up together to produce you and me and your reason. Crazy. Literally crazy. And, I mean, if you take athe- famous atheists such as Dawkins or Richard Krauss, I mean, if, if you follow these guys and you try to really understand what they say, they do not deny that there could be, theoretically speaking, in a, let's call it a theory of God, a God, an intelligence behind the creations in the heavens and the earth and, and living things and the first replicative cell and the cosmos and so on and so forth. They just deny the fact that this God is the personal, active, interactive God of Abraham, Moses and the monotheistic religions, which is something that I will tackle in another video but at least i mean at best at best reflecting on the way that we did and actually in a better way because i actually got a bit confused but reflecting on these things should actually lead you at least to agnosticism at least and this is really the least of the least of the least but surely not to an empty claim such as atheism and the Quran clarified, and, and I want to end by quoting two powerful verses of the Quran, which again I do not memorize, but I know that they are there, and I will get better with references. <laughs> and I ask you to forgive me for this this video, which just came about out of the spur of the moment. Well, one of them, one of the verses, this is my one of them, my favorite verses. In it, God speaks. If you believe in the Quran, at least. God speaks and he says, look, I did not create, I did not create the creation to have fun. Because some people say, well, the creator just created things and then he left it as it is and it just lets it run. As if he is having fun, right? With the creation. We say, I did not have fun. If I want, if we... Uh, plural majestatis, plural of majesty. If I wanted, if we wanted to have this fun and to have this uh, leisure time, so to speak, we would have taken this fun from our own selves, from us. Meaning, even if I wanted to have fun, don't think that I would have taken fun by, I mean, don't think that I needed a creation to have fun. No, 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 no. This is why in another part of the Quran, God says, I only created the jinn and the human beings only so that they would worship me. And again, the concept of God in the Quran is really pure. God is pure agency. Islam does not have any problem, such as the problem of evil and all this mumbo jumbo. Why? Because, I mean, the problem of evil arises from a Christian interpretation of a God in which you say that God is all good. But in Islam, God says in the Quran, this verse, I memorized it, this part of the verse, which means he wrote, he imposed, he, he ordered to himself rahma, mercy. In another verse, or I think it's a hadith, uh, it says that the mercy of my mercy shall always, shall be always more and shall always overthrow my anger and so on and so forth. Well, that doesn't mean, if you look at the Quran and how God literally speaks in the Quran, you see that God always says, like we did these things for example we created the heavens the earth and all the things that i favored you with and this and that and if we had wanted this this insha this desire is pure agency god is pure agency he can do whatever he wants and of course it's not a male it's not a female i'm using he only because of cultural reasons but he can do whatever he wants. He decided to be merciful. He decided to create things that would worship him. And he 
I mean, it, just pure agency. And this is really only where you can explain creation. If you go beyond space and time and you understand the spaces and time follow rules and laws, just like the football players, and you understand that beyond, beyond this, there must be an entity transcended of space and time. Well, the only way you can explain that this entity began a creation and gave it such a clear, logical way of uh, for us to interpret and understand it, which lo with, with logical causation, with physical causation, with creatures in it that are aware, conscious, and so on and so forth, then this being not only must always must only be God, but if you think so, this thing about the explanation does not stop with God. Even God has an explanation. And the explanation of God is that He is a necessary being, the first cause, or as the Quran says, Badi'u samawatul ard the originator and the initiator of the heavens and the earth and moreover he's pure agency he doesn't follow any laws he's the one who creates the laws and if you follow again the hadith and even the bible it says the beginning was the word and in the hadith he specifies this and he says the first thing that Allah God created is the pen and God ordered the pen to write and the pen said to God what should I write and the God said everything, everything that will happen. What does it mean? Well, this gives quite, um, this is a strong argument from a religious, religious, theolo religious theological point of view about the existence of laws and the dictation of how laws determine how things actually act. But beyond, beyond before, in a causal sense, before these laws, we find a God that is free from laws, from which laws are originated, and can do whatever he wishes. Pure agency, which, according to the uh, by looking at the effect of this first cause, and by looking the, uh, 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 of how we find aware, conscious, intelligent things, this thing must be all aware, all intelligent, and uh, have, of course, full wisdom of everything. This is the only way you can make sense of the world. Remember the example about the, <laughs> the cell phone? Well, in this case, you and me are the cell phone. Human beings are the cell phone. If we are not found conscious, I mean, let's say for, for absurd, but I mean, for, with an absurd example, that you could observe the universe in a sort of separate way. And in, this, in the universe or the multiverse, there is no, you, you were to find no agent no living things only dead things of course no one would be there to observe it but let's just say it for the sake of the example in this case maybe you could have argued something about things just coming out of nothing but the fact you you need to live with the fact that you exist and that you are an intelligent being and that you are not a rock that you have wisdom and that truly this wisdom must have arisen from a short from a sort of law of life or law of wisdom something that dictated that given the right conditions reason awareness consciousness intelligence cell phones in a sense even and even you and me i mean we are superior than cell phones right, cell phones, right? we could arise and with this i stop this video i end this video and if you want to just stick around the channel and put some likes instead of just, even if just don't subscribe this is just for sharing i just did this video to share this thing and um like this video at least if you want so that i will understand that okay somebody likes this and listens to this so that i may do more of these videos and for the muslims and for the non-muslims also i say salam alaikum and this is really a video that i think will help many muslims and i hope will help many Muslims and even people in general before the opening of this Ramadan, a Ramadan we hope that with certainty, with tranquility of the heart, knowing that the God does exist. And again, in another video, inshallah, we'll discuss also about why the God of Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, is the true one God that we have talked about, about uh, in this video. So like, stick around and peace. Assalamu alaikum.